you know, I was just looking at these two developers that are involved with Nightcap on Minjimbal. And I thought of, I wonder, does anyone remember one of the comedy shows years ago where they used to have the Bodgy Brothers? You know, they used to make you laugh. Bodgy or Dodgy Brothers. <laughs> but, yeah, it just brought to mind because I was thinking about the um, Mebane Springs development that's just opened up in the same area. And the chalk and cheese, I was wondering whether if you went to the Mebane Springs development, whether you'd meet the developers there that look like, well, look at Mark McMurtry. I mean, every time I look at him, I just, you know, there's one feature of him that really draws me in. That's his gut. You know, you can't miss it. It's like, how do you have an active, healthy, connected, do-no-harm life and have a gut like that. But anyway, we're not going to talk about Mark McMurtry today. I'm going to talk about um, the other brother, Adrian Brennock. So I've been reading um, a transcript, a court transcript of Adrian Brennock's testimony in court in 2019 and the claims that he's making under oath about what he's saying is true. One of them is that he was just a consultant for Freedom Summits and Truthology. Just like so many other things he said, oh, I'm just something. Like right now, um, I'll introduce a couple of other characters in a minute, but one of them that says that, well, you know, Adrian Brennock is just he's got a job now in marketing it's okay to be a bankrupt and have a job in marketing um he's a developer you know i think there's a little bit of a difference between the job descriptions because otherwise there'd be a lot of people that in marketing that were also developers like adrian brennock is claiming to be and like mark mcmurtry is claiming to be they are not, well, they may be marketing themselves and the project, but you can market something without making a statement like, I am the Nightcap Village developer. So, you know, being a developer is a little bit of a different job description than just a marketing job. He also claimed that in being the consultant for Freedom Summits that he wasn't actually that involved with them, that he actually offered his services through another company which is deregistered. Now that was just something he told the courts, it wasn't actually the case. Was it Adrian Brennock? Now here he is on the right hand side here in 2012. Now, at either just at the beginning of 2012 or the end of 2011, Adrian Brennock here had become partners with Mark Darwin. And this is actually confirmed by Mark Darwin himself in videos. So, and I'll show you too a little bit further on that even Adrian Brennock's statement confirms that he is partners not a consultant. Uh, if you're a consultant, you will introduce your client and their product. You will not represent it as, like in the uh, Aussie Beach TV, Adrian Brennock here is talking about Freedom Summits, you know, we, us, this is what we want and this is our aim. And So he's talking about it as he is in charge of it as he is a part of it, he's not just a consultant offering services. Now a lot of the testimony in court in 2019 that Adrian Brennock made was statements about his relationship with Mark Darwin. Now Mark Darwin is in the UK at the time 
and he does not show up in court and refute anything. So pretty much Adrian Bronock can say whatever he wants and he knows this. But in hindsight, perhaps he may not, you know, should not have said, uh, belittled his involvement in it and tried to blame others more because, you know, all through the transcript he's making out like he didn't know really what's going on, you know, he, he's, he's kind of like a mushroom, you know, he doesn't really know what's going on. And even the company that he started, Wollumbin Horizons, he can't even go to Medora's fine um, accounting and say, I need a copy of the books, I'm going to court. So when he shows up in court, he goes, oh, well, I don't have any records, I need the records, you know. And there's five different sets of records because there's been five different directors. Well, the thing is that it doesn't matter which director you have in a company, there is only one set of books for the company. And he said, there are five sets of books for Wollumbin Horizons. Each one has been, each director apparently was keeping their own books. So I still have to ask about uh, Medoris. Uh, you all use Medoris as a registered office, they're an accounting firm, you obviously employ them, otherwise you couldn't use them as a registered office. So where are their accounting records? Why didn't you present them to the court in 2019? But anyway, I'm getting a bit sidetracked because I'm going back to try and introduce you to how Adrian Brennock and Mark Darwin started things off together. And also too, he claimed in the court transcripts that he didn't um, meet Mark Darwin until 2013. He was already partners with him in 2012. He'd been partners with him, if not at the beginning of 2012, he's been a partner for him with him for at least a year. And he's telling the court that he met him in 2013. And if questioned on that, I dare say that he would probably say, well, what I meant is that that's the first time I met him in person. I didn't mean to imply that I didn't know him before them and we weren't partners. Because yes, we were partners, but you asked me when I first met him and I'm going to split hairs like Max Egan does and say that if, if I haven't met someone in person, I'm going to say, you know, that I haven't met them until that time because you don't meet anyone apparently according to these people unless you meet them in person. Although that is kind of stupid Adrian Brennock because if you hadn't met him in person till 2013 and you had set up as a partner with him. So no wonder he's smiling in January 2012 because by April 2012 Mark Darwin is putting out a video saying that Adrian Brunock has had success with his process of going to the cops, claiming there's fraud on his card or, or um, account, then going to uh, the, uh, the fossil and the cossel <laughs> or whatever they are. They're actually one, one body now so that you don't ever have to make one complaint. So his very unique and identifiable process of claiming fraud on his accounts, he can actually explain away as fraud because the banks are fraudulent as they are, keep claiming they're fraudulent, they make money out in thin air. So when they're going in to say that there's fraud on those accounts that the banks have given them on cards or personal loans or whatever, they actually are calling the banks frauds and they believe that it was a fraud to begin with. So yeah, that's the way they'd explain it if he ever gets pulled up on. You know what, he, in uh, by I think by the end of 2013, he had written off five debts worth over 300,000. Can you imagine what it's like to go and spend over $300,000 
and then not have to pay back a single cent of it because you come up with this this concept of let's go to the cops reported as fraud then let's follow this process and then um, yeah get the debt written off but five times he did that five times he had to sign a non-disclosure agreement to not speak about what had what had transpired and he did and I've even got him now in a video admitting that he knew that he wasn't supposed to talk about it but he uploaded all that stuff to his website anyway so he actually volunteered and admitted that he knowingly breached his non-disclosure agreement well five of them for because each debt that they write, wrote off he had to sign a statutory declaration to state that he believed it was fraud and he had to sign non-disclosure agreements not to disclose what had gone on which he breached clearly breached and it can be show he breached he, he breached them so no wonder he's smiling and then by 2020 in June they had sold back Wollumbin Horizons to a member company and they knew it was all right to put out the promotional documentary and to start selling the blocks off because the land wasn't leaving any of the nightcap on Minjimble members it was staying right where it was and once they had purchased it at auction NCV Enterprises they knew that it was still under their control and that's when they started the full-on promotional selling it and offering it as an option to people in the 2020 turmoil COVID times but in between 2012 and 2020 there's been a lot that's gone on that this man has been responsible for Wollumbin Horizons is just merely one of the things at the same time he is dealing with setting up uh, the community and taking monies off people the ATO are making him bankrupt and he's also going to court because he's in a house where he said you know what I'm not going to pay back my mortgage anymore I'm just going to claim sovereignty and not pay it and that's where perpetual trustees came against him a judgment was awarded he fought that for over a year between 2016 to 2017 at the whole time he's going bankrupt he's he's thrown Wollumbin Horizons into a fire sale as was clearly identified in the Vox it was a deliberate maneuver and an attempt to avoid the responsibilities of the company which was all Adrian Bronock's responsibility he put it all in his name even though uh, you're not limited by the number of directors you could have do you know that each and every single one of the people that bought in could have also been listed as directors on Wollumbin Horizons which means that at a directors meeting to do anything he could easily be outnumbered instead of controlling the whole scenario like he did and then when it got to court actually making out like well you know I, I, I didn't have much to do with it at all and he's already contradicted what he said about how that he only got involved when it was Buller Buller when Mark Darwin couldn't get the, the money for it after he'd been knocked back in the court transcript he said he was involved at Bellingen and that's when Mark Darwin had asked him for the money there so was it Bellingen or Buller Buller and the thing was that Buller Buller was bought up but Mark Darwin had Bellingen that he was going for and it was only when that all fell through that they decided to put all the focus onto Buller Buller that they'd heard about through Andrew Cody. So here on the Wayback Machine you can actually see the steering committee 
that was appointed for the Bulla Bulla community. And there's more down here too. There's Mark and Steph, Adrian and Christy, Andrew and Catherine, George and Sue, Manuel and Norma, Phil and Mete, Tamady and Sarah, Steve and Kelly, Craig and Holly. Now, out of all those, the only ones I don't know are George and Sue. But if you actually look at the next capture of this web page, George and Sue have actually disappeared, so I dare say they pulled out. Now you can actually see that this was a capture on the 27th of March 2015. So it doesn't necessarily mean that was the time things changed it's just the date of the capture these events could have happened earlier been set up within a time frame but you know that by this time this is the situation now if you look here Adrian and Christy Brannock uh, we have been involved in Truthology and Freedom Summits as partners with Mark and Steph for nearly four years now. So he's been involved with Truthology and Freedom Summits for nearly four years when that was actually put up there. So even if you're taking it as, as the date of the capture, that's still 2011. As I said, the end of 2011 or early 2012 was when Mark Darwin confirmed that he had taken on a partner and that partner is Adrian Brennock and Adrian Brennock confirms that here but suddenly when Adrian Brennock has to testify in court he forgets he was a partner and only a consultant but then again I suppose it's like now where he claims to only be in marketing when he's a developer <laughs> well, you know, I suppose they're both sales jobs, but I wouldn't say that. You know, marketing's a pretty broad thing to put on. Uh, you know, he's got a job in marketing. And I'm saying that because his bankruptcy trustee says that it's not a crime for Adrian Brennock to have a job in marketing for NICAP on Mingenbull. I mean, come on, Bettles. That's more than just a job. Just like he said, he was just a consultant where, nah, he's a partner and he's been partners for nearly four years. Now, when he gets into court, he pretends like he's the partner that never knew anything that Mark Darwin knew at all. Well, no, actually, I think Mark Darwin was a little bit of awe about how tricky Adrian Brennock was with his process of claiming fraud, and over five hundred, uh, over three hundred thousand, five times. But that came at a price, didn't it? You couldn't tell anyone how you did it, or that you had success and had those debts zeroed out. All that money you spent you had zeroed out and didn't have to pay any of it back and the only thing you had to do was keep your mouth shut and you didn't you not only didn't keep your mouth shut but you decided that you'd actually try and advertise it as a technique for others to follow to claim their own fraud on their own accounts so that they don't have to pay back money they spent Yeah, I have to tell you that I feel like I've got to know so many of these people and you know like you look at this picture here of Steph you see that beautiful smile that she's got on her face she is just such a warm natural lovely looking person you know and I can imagine that it was because of her that Mark Darwin was so easily able to attract in others that have got the same good heart and ambitions and the thing is that you know when he got rid of her he got rid of the best part the realest part and he replaced it with well 
you know. I suppose it's an old story, isn't it, about how friends betray each other and they end up going with the other one's spouse or something like that. It's kind of one of the classic betrayals you see happen. But this happened because the other one just happened to come into a lot of money after her husband died. So it was more profitable for someone like Mark Darwin to um, pass on his effervescent wife and go for the rich one. <laughs> Yeah, you know, that's just my opinion from looking at these people, you know. You you look at um, pictures of Steph and she is just such a warm person. That's what you get from her. She, there is no natural complicity or dishonesty about her. So, you know, I suppose in a way Mark did her a favour because she would have found herself in a situation that as I said, she appears for me very open and honest and she would not have understood the, or agreed with the level of dishonesty that had been going on. And once you start getting into the Bellingen project, uh, I think that's where Steph probably found out that, um, you know, you wave a few dollar signs in front of people's eyes and it's amazing what they'll do if they think they can get money. So here we have Adrian Brennock back in 2015 at the very minimum March saying that he's been partners with Mark and Steph for nearly four years. So, well actually they have. And that's why before his bankruptcy, he put Nyepi into his wife's name because, you know, it, it makes no difference whether it's in his name or her name, they can access the same things. I mean, any married couple knows this, even a couple that have been living as if married, you know, you know that if, well, it's the common assets. And you also know that, well, a lot of women end up putting things in their names because, um, well, they seem to be <laughs> better managers. It's just a common story. I, yeah, I did all the paperwork and handled everything for my ex. And it seems to be the story for many women who end up becoming the secretaries. You know, the, the men want to be the managers and the women become the secretaries. Well, someone's got to make sure that their ambitions can be fulfilled, don't they? Because you know what they say, behind every great man is a better woman. Or a woman keeping the books and making sure that these guys don't offer stuff that they can't deliver on. You know, usually you've got a, a good woman that will, yeah, help you to see the error of your ways before you actually make them and affect your whole family. But sadly, you know, that there were more than just broken dreams of lost investors. I mean, Andrew and Catherine no longer together, Mark and Steph. Um, the other couples I don't know because I think the sooner they got out, the more likely they were to not have it ruin their relationship because of, well, you know, that there's usually one person that says, oh, look, you know, uh, we should wait it out, you know, we're probably overreacting. And the other person saying, well, no, we're not overreacting, we're getting screwed. And, and then it becomes an argument between who's right and who's wrong. And then when it all falls apart, well, yeah, so does the relationship because one is proven to be more right than the other one. In, and yeah, so these things that have gone on at Nightcap even years ago have destroyed relationships. Mark Darwin left Steph when she was pregnant and took off with one of her friends and she had just come into a big heap of money because of an insurance payout on her husband's death. <laughs> Mark Darwin follows the money and so does Adrian Brunock and people should remember that because, uh, you know, he, he wanted to live in the community but now he knows that there's no point that you can never build on it, he'll never give up his land. 
his big mansion in um, Willow Bank. Because I guarantee you that that isn't even, um, that title wouldn't even be connected to Adrian or Christy. It'd be somehow held in their benefit so that no one could actually claim it was theirs so that that asset couldn't be seized. So I dare say that somewhere, somehow, that um, property in Willow Bank has actually been hidden from their ownership. And, you know, the only way that you would hide a major asset like that is with the cooperation of certain people and trust of certain people that, you know, if they looked at a title on who owned the land or the house, it wouldn't show Adrian or Christy Brannock. Uh, it doesn't matter if it shows, you know, his father or anybody like that, as long as his father's not in trouble. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's just a common thing. You put it, I mean, who hasn't heard of people putting things in family members' names? It's the events, too, that I've heard of where, you know, they put that in some family member's name and then that family member decides, well, you know what? Possession is nine-tenths of the law. It's mine now. <laughs> and they can't actually prove otherwise. And that really does cause a little bit of a problem in families, too, is when you mistrust the wrong person. But, you know, money does get in the way of uh, every relationship if you let it. Now, for anyone to operate like Adrian Braddock and Mark McMurtry and others do, they need the help of lawyers and accountants and other people that will aid them in their cause. And perhaps, you know, not be so questioning when, you know, someone like Adrian Brunock says, oh, I'm only in marketing, when he's the developer of a multi-million dollar project and he is financially invested in it through the companies that Nyepi holds shares in. And it, it, it's pretty ridiculous. But let's look at some of those people. This, this scary face over here, look at him. <laughs> That's Stephen Starts. That's the liquidator of Wollumbun Horizons. This is the man that just recently has confirmed that only the trust creditors will get any money back from the sale of 3222. So, good on you, Steve. At least you did something right. But you also know, Steve, that there is more to do. There is more you can do more that you should do if you want to devoid yourself of any kind of implication that you have aided and abetted the activities of others that could be said to be mm, not quite legal. Now this man in the middle is Rothwell Wall. He was the one that has taken in the past lost investors years ago he took their money into trust accounts and he was responsible for holding several different matters and transferring funds between various accounts. He's actually um, coming up uh, to um, trial. People are taking him to court for fiduciary trust breaches and also which has to do with you go to a lawyer and ask him to keep an accountant's books and then you turn around like Adrian Brennock says, well, you know, my lawyer doesn't keep very good books. And the judge said, yeah, neither your lawyer nor you know how to keep very good books, do you? That's why you need to go to Medoras, the accountant, that all these companies have as the registered office and get the books from them. Because these lawyers are just surface direct that will also be able to hold, handle any legal matters. If someone wants to come try and snooping around, they know the law, they can shut them down. 
let's move Roth over here. What level of involvement that Roth still has with Nightcap on Minjimble? I'm not quite sure. But I suppose that's for investigators to find out when they, they get all this put forward to them. So this man here, big smiley face, that's Jason Bettles. That's actually Adrian Brunock's bankruptcy trustee. He's the one that's actually just, um, well, he's doing the right thing too. He's looking at why Adrian Brunock moved shares from Nyepi and the shares that Nyepi holds in other companies where money comes back to Adrian Brunock why he moved that at that time. So that's Jason Bettles, the bankruptcy trustee for Adrian Brannock. And all of these individuals so far have what you would say they would claim as plausible deniability in that their client has told them certain information and that they have no reason to think any differently. Well, they all have reason to think differently now because their client is not the only one that's been giving them information and evidence. But there are other evidence put forward to them that they have to pay attention to. And they have taken these matters seriously, which is good to say because, you know what? You take your ass off the line, put someone else's on, because you know that when the right things haven't been done, that that's what's required of you. To do the right thing takes a bigger man than it does to keep covering up. And this one over here, this little guy here, actually when I saw him there with that little smirk on his face and his hands like that, have you ever seen those... Um, you know those shows where they've got their hands on a buzzer and they're getting ready to answer a question? That's where he looks like he's, he looks like he's getting ready to push the buzzer because he knows the right answer. <laughs> well, I suppose he thinks he does know the right answer because that's Billy Fitzgerald. That's the lawyer that they skitch on to people to um, shut them up if they dare say anything about anybody at Nightcap or Minjimbal. This guy is the one that will try and scare you off. Billy Fitzgerald. You know, sorry, but you got your hand on the buzzer. Mine's a little bit quicker, so you don't get to answer. <laughs> <laughs> and likewise, this little um, man on the end, Billy Fitzgerald, will also say that he was only making letters and threats and threats of action based on what his client told him. He doesn't actually know whether what his client told him is the truth or not, but he will make threats based on the assumption that what his client is telling him is true. And if anyone says any differently, well, again, Billy, you've been looped in with the same information. You know what's been going on, don't you? Anyway, these three guys here have been an important part of Adrian Brunock's life, as well as other members of Nightcap or Minjimble, especially Billy sticking up for them, because how dare you? You know, in this world of free speech, how dare you have free speech and voice it? <laughs> oh, Billy, Billy, you're just... You're just looking so Irish there, aren't you? So, this guy over here, Stephen Starts, was the one that uh, Mark Darwin said in court that was colluding behind doors with Adrian Brunock. Now, whether that is true or not, one can never know unless there was a recording of the event and someone produced that. But uh, Stephen Starts has done the right thing by the people that actually paid for the land at 3222. Not for all the people that claimed that they were owed money. And some of those companies 
Well, now we don't even have to answer the question, do we, Stephen? How do you pay a deregistered company? Hmm, that would have been a bit of a quandary. But it's not anymore, is it? Because only trust creditors, those that paid in for a share, will actually get any money back. So that's good news, really good news. But where that's good news for past lost investors, it might not be that good a news for current investors. Well, there's, there's going to be a little bit of a cash flow problem. Adrian Brennock is now under investigation. And whether that will intensify will be depending on whether the ATO are actually going to fund further investigation into the movement of the shares and how much money they think they may have lost out on because of the activities that have been going on. And this is where I might give a heads up to anyone listening that has set up any kind of foundation and called it whatever you want. If it's not set up legitimately, if it's tied somehow to something that <laughs> Mark Tarwin or Adrian Brennock advised you or you helped go in a different in, in that direction they showed you, uh, you really need to wonder that if the ATO did start going through all these creator foundation that Mark Darwin created, goes to Westpac Bank where it seems to be a very friendly bank for these things to be. Certain banks and branches are clearly identified already. You need to start thinking about the setup of how you're running your own community. Because if it's not a legitimate setup, that is not my fault. That is yours, okay? Everybody in society bitches about paying taxes, me included. But I also understand the very necessary part of it, that we all contribute our bit to running society. Without taxes, we're not going to pay for those that can't afford to. The elderly, the sick, you know, we wouldn't even be able to donate millions of dollars to overseas countries to aid them if we didn't pay taxes. It's because of the taxes that we pay that allows us to share and not keep everything to ourselves. The reason we complain about taxes is because there are too many that are, are not giving their fair share. And all of those that would set up foundations to hide any income and not pay their fair share, you're not paying your fair share. And yet if you had an accident, you'd go to the hospital, you'd use Medicare, and you'd get what other people have put their fair share into. And this is kind of what annoys me about all these people, these sovereignty places that say, you know, you can set up with your own set of rules aside from society, but you can have your, the best of both worlds because you can live in Australia and your little sovereignty as well. So it, it's like, yeah, so you can set up your tax havens and your tax dodges, and then when you want to use any of the services that everybody else contributes towards that you don't, you'll go and use them. You know, our hospital system is already burdened enough. And if you haven't paid taxes to help contribute to running our hospitals, don't go anywhere near them. Or if you do, don't have the damn nerve to claim Medicare on them. In fact, people that are set up like Mark McMurtry should have any Medicare card confiscated off them. Let them pay for these things themselves. Because, you know, if you want to set up as your own little country and your own little sovereign, provide your own healthcare services. And if you want to use the healthcare services of what would then be another country, because you know, you've set up your own little country, um, you pay for those services like anybody else would. Not Australians, because we pay for it in our Medicare. Every year, in everything we pay, Medicare, income tax, you'll know that you're getting so much taken off each year to contribute towards Medicare. And for someone like me that barely even goes near a doctor or a hospital, 
you know, that's I've contributed a lot to other people's healthcare over the years. <laughs> but what have some people contributed when all they are doing is trying to hide and be exclusive, not share, but yeah, just do exactly what they accuse the elites of doing, looking after their own and bugger anybody else. So there's not as much cash going back into the NICAP on Minjimbal development as what they first anticipated. The start of 2021 is looking a little bit differently than the way the start of 2020 did. And certainly a lot more differently than when they were all smiles because they had just bought back three triple two through NCV. They just phoenixed it. And yes, Stephen starts, you know what phoenixing is. So do you, Mr. Bettles. And so do you, Billy Fitzgerald, because you're all you're talking about how your firms so knowledgeable on liquidations and administrations and things like that. So all of you guys know exactly what illegal phoenixing is, don't you? And you also know what your respective clients have told you, don't you? Well, now you know what others have told you too. I know what your fiends sent. I've seen them. <laughs> I know that you cannot claim ignorance. None of you. So it's a good thing to see that some are actually doing the right thing. So I, I will give that credit to you, Stephen Starts. Credit to you for doing the right thing. But as I said, there's a little bit further you could go with this. And you know it. Because uh, if you don't clean up your house completely, there's still a few skeletons that might come out to haunt you. So... I'd, I'd consider that you think about that carefully because you haven't finished setting the record straight yet, have you? I'll give you the opportunity to do it yourself. John Bertles, sorry, Jason. <laughs> John. <laughs> Jason, you're doing really good, mate. Keep it up. Just get onto the ATO and make sure that... Um, hey, look, they don't fund any further investigations. I'll do it. I'll do it for nothing. Yeah. And Billy, I think you're running out of people to threaten now, aren't you? You scared off all the people at the shop. <laughs> oh no, you didn't scare them off. The uh, NICAP on Minjimbo members deliberately sabotaged their own business by getting rid of all the leaseholders. So now they've got no paying leaseholders. And the only guy that they do have in there running the shop Tony McMurtry is Mark McMurtry's brother. Well, let's just say I don't like what I'm hearing about him. Not at all. People should uh, listen to what's been said in certain respects, though, about the shop owner. <laughs> just be careful about who goes into the shop. Leave your kids in the car, eh? Make sure that, um, well, actually, if you leave them in the car, don't leave them unattended. Got to watch them. Oh, I just have to cover up that photograph. It's just bleh. Sorry. <laughs> kind of remind me of my cousin. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, what we're looking at here is a photograph of the Creative Foundation team. Now, Creative Foundation is also part of Truthology. Like, Truthology did Creative Foundation. They did this Australian Legal Services Foundation, um, my debt's gone. Uh, I mean, they had a finger in so many pies. So you can see up the back here, there's Mark Darwin and there's Adrian Bronock. Now, when you're talking about Freedom Summits and Creative Foundation, there are three names that come up consistently and you especially notice these in the posts. If you're not talking to Mark Darwin, A.B., or Cherie. So I'm wondering which one out of these is Cherie. Well, we know which ones she isn't. <laughs> Although, if we, um, if Nancy Pelosi gets away, well then we won't be able to identify she or he, mother or father or anything like that because, or we'll just say that one of those persons there that 
how do you describe people if you cannot describe basic things like gender and appearance I mean come on next thing they'll be telling you you can't say that someone's got grey hair because that's ageist <laughs> so Adrian Brennock as Mark Darwin's partner was very much involved in truthology freedom summits creative foundation and well bulla bulla and he was also involved with Bellingen before it went to Bulla Bulla. And that's by his own admission, not by any statement of mine. So I'm trying to, where I can, present the information that they have confirmed is the case. Well, Adrian Brunock made several statements under oath that are clearly contradicted by Mark Darwin and what he says in his video evidence. And it is evidence, okay? Because Mark Darwin was ex parte. Any evidence that was given in court in those five days was given without the ability of Mark Darwin to refute any of the information that was brought out against him. And because he wasn't there to refute it, Adrian Brannock steered it to make sure that well, I don't know really what went on. You'd have to ask Mark Darwin or you'd have to ask Philip Dixon. And again, this is why Philip Dixon and Cherie Stokes are involved. Because they've been involved in Freedom Summits and Truthology. And, uh, well, I don't know whether the Cherie they speak of is Cherie Stokes. But there's a good chance of it. Yes, I'd have to imagine that there's eh, probably a little bit of a cash flow problem now. Now that the anticipated money that was going to come back to community members, or NICAP or Minjimbal community members, it's not going to come back now. And there are certain past lost investors that are said to actually still be living there. Like uh, Philip Morandini and Dean Mooney are actually said to be living there. So you could not say that they have lost anything. So I'll be keeping an eye out to see whether Jason Battles here pays out people that actually have not, oh no, not Jason Battles, sorry. Ha, this man here, Stephen Starts, Bugsy, whether he actually pays out people that have not suffered a loss. If Philip Morandini and Dean Mooney are still living there, they have suffered no loss. Adrian Brannock, who gave his share to Christy Brannock, are still enjoying shares and have suffered no loss. Cherie Stokes and Philip Dixon, likewise, still have suffered no loss. So if any of these individuals are paid when they have suffered no loss, that will be an interesting thing to answer for because um, you have to consider just how much evidence is out there to support the claims that I'm actually making, Stephen. Hmm? Philip Morandini? I think he's got a container home there just like the one uh, Andrew Cody had that uh, Mark Darwin did a video on. Not quite sure what Dean Mooney's got going, but, you know, they're living there. They haven't suffered a loss. Do you know that they're not living there? Have you searched all that three and a half thousand acres for any residents? Well, you better get on your bike, son, and find out then, better you? Because if you pay out people that are living there, they have not suffered a loss. That'd be an interesting twist, wouldn't it? So consider that. Whether the people that you're paying out Adrian Brannock or Christy Brannock or uh, um, Cherie Stokes, Philip Dixon, Philip Morandini, Dean Mooney, whether they have actually suffered any loss that they deserve a refund for. Because seriously, mate, if these people are living there, what loss have they suffered? Yeah, they're, they're squatting there illegally, they're hiding and they're they're suffering for their 
having to live there illegally and quietly, hidden so nobody knows that they're there. Yeah, well, imagine what would happen if the council found out that yet again, these people at Nightcap just don't <laughs> don't know how to follow any rules, do they? So think about that, Stephen, okay? Think about whether those that are considered trust creditors have actually suffered a loss. It'll be interesting to see what conclusion you do come up with. Because, uh, quite frankly, there are at least... Christy Brannock has not suffered a loss. Her husband is a developer for the project. He's getting money through Nyepi and everything else. And, <laughs> I'm sorry, but you can just say that he's got a job in marketing. Wow. You're going to need some pretty good proof to show that it's just marketing and that he isn't financially vested in it. Uh, make all those ATSIC searches change all their information magically. Get rid of all those shares that belong to Nyepi. Make them suddenly evaporate. <laughs> well, hey, you can do it with figures on a book. Why can't you do it on digital over the internet? Oh, bummer, you don't have the encryption for that, do you? You can't hack the system. Well, buggy, you'll just have to suffer for it then, won't you? And you know what, gentlemen? Mr. Fitzgerald, Mr. Beryls, Mr. Starts. You know what warning I'd give each of you? See that clan in the middle there, Adrian Brennock? You have heard the Voxes. You know that he has said, you will come out underneath him. He will do his best to blame you. So it's good to see that you're getting out ahead of that. Because it's going to be a lot harder for him to blame you for doing the wrong thing to him when you were doing the right thing by the law and by other people in exposing Adrian Brennock and not giving him comfort to continue his activities and you Billy Fitzgerald to actually you know you can make threats about what your client claims but you know you give no question as to whether he's just made up a whole heap of shit you don't care and for that mate you know I'd have to believe that a little Irish boy like you would actually have some belief in God. <laughs> you know what's in store for you, mate. You can sit there and smirk with your hand on the buzzer, but it's going to be fail, mate. You're not going to win the race. So, boys, it's time to consider and to wise up as you keep wising up as you have done and understand that when Adrian Brunock says one of his skills is fucking people over, that that includes you too, all right? The only people that he won't fuck over are his own family, which even then I dare say he's probably done it in his own way with them anyway. <laughs> now, the interesting thing about Adrian Brunock is that he seems to have been telling people that you know, he personally knows and are involved with that he's a bankrupt. But he's not telling any of the potential investors. I mean, that uh, confession about him being a bankrupt is not in the official promo. It's in a completely separate video that isn't even supposed to be part of Nightcap. It's part of Dreaded Cheetah's documentary on silenced and censored people and how Adrian Brennock made out that because of his work with uh, Freedom Summits that they came against him and made him be quiet and put on these non-disclosure agreements what a down and outright bloody lie that was the only reason that he has got five non-disclosure agreements Nobody came against him. He signed them willingly because he got out of five debts. <laughs> oh, mate. No wonder you think you're... Yeah, cover up his eye. 
No wonder you're smiling because you think the world's full of fools that all they've done is just buy your story. You know, hook, line and sinker for so long. But you know, you can't fool all the people all the time. There has to be, like your little doggy that you're cradling there, you know, mate, every dog has its day. And uh, I'd say that you just about had yours. It's all coming unraveled for you, and no matter what you do now. Hmm. And so any of those that are tied up with Adrian Brunock, bankrupt, you ought to consider what last-ditch attempts he's going to make to try and blame stuff on the other people that it's not his fault. Because, you know, coming out on top, fucking people over is his skill. He's thinking about it. He's trying to find a way to do it to you. Do it to you to save himself. So, you keep doing the right thing. You've got nothing to worry about from the likes of Adrian Brunock. And sometimes doing the right thing requires a little bit of confession of your own soul as well. Admitting perhaps some wrongs that you've done yourself in that you were trusting and that you didn't believe that you were actually giving that in that sense. I mean, come on, you've had legal advice, haven't you, Mr. Starts? You know exactly what I'm talking about. Anyway, just wanted to bring uh, the information about Adrian Brannock more together and the people in the background that are helping him. You know, at the moment... You know, there is also what's going on at the Mount Burrell commercial and what's going on across the road in Waratah where, well, it looks like Derek Zillman has bought land there that connects to the land that the caravan park is attached to. The commercial, the Mount Burrell commercial, ha apparently doesn't even have any of those cabins left. They've been slowly demolished, removed or whatever be interesting to know what happened to them and also too is if you remove something like that don't you at least need council permit to do that why is there never any record of anything that these people do at council well for the simple fact uh, let me just play you this clip I have to turn my volume down so that the video sound won't come through and reverb in the background but the interesting things that he says in here one that he identifies himself as Mr X two about all the problems that he talks about dealing with councils and things like that so in other words how to make up your own rules and maneuver your way around all the different places like council and things like that so anyway I'm going to just run this clip that I did of all AB in the... This is tomorrow. I'm a presenter at the summits and I'm Mr X and uh, I talk to people about fines and infringements and um, the legitimacy of councils and those sorts of things. My name. We offer processes for people who are struggling with their debt to help them rid the banks off their backs and debt collectors off their backs yeah. and we we offer a, a service basically to help people who are really struggling financially. Things. The weekend is actually mostly about bringing attention to the sex slave industry so our our focus at um, Freedom of Summits is to, to, to provide information to as many people as possible but at the same time with an agenda for us which is to save girls from the sex slave industry in Thailand, Cambodia and Laos. Uh, in particular this one is uh, to do with Free to Shine and uh, Nikki me, who is uh, the CEO of Free to Shine, will speak tomorrow. We, got, um, we also talk about not-for-profit foundations, how you can operate privately as opposed to publicly, and the difference between the two, and what is a public organisation and what is a private organisation, how that jurisdiction that we spoke about with councils then ties into debts and, and bank loans and car loans and personal loans and your mortgage. And is a present. The worst thing that you can possibly do is go home and watch the news. Turn your TV off. Don't it's watch depressing. the TV. It's depressing. It's designed yeah. to be depressing. Yeah. It's designed to actually get you into a state of fear, mm -hmm. intimidation and hopelessness. Yeah. Turn, Turn off your TV, TV and watch Aussie Beach TV. TV. So instead of watching the television to get all, our, all of our information, where do we go? Where to get everything? Where do we turn? 
Um, it's a great question. Uh, look, I would first thing I'd say is, is talk to your family. Yeah. I mean, talk to the people that you love. You know, if you interact with them, you turn the TV off, you've got nothing to do, um, talk to your partner. I mean, make love to your partner. Talk to your kids. Teach them about this stuff. Don't just stick them in front of the computer or the TV and allow them to just do what they want to do and spend eight, ten hours a day infecting their minds with this sort of stuff. If you're going to go onto the internet, do research. I mean, watch things like you guys, Aussie Beach TV. Get onto our site, Freedom Summits, and it's www, all the W's, freedomsummits.org. Truthology, another fantastic um, uh, website. There's over 840 videos on that. You can spend hours and hours and hours researching this information, making yourself aware of so many different topics, but at the same time, educating your family and friends and those that you love, okay? You're, You're watching, watching me on Aussie, Aussie Beach TV. TV. Woohoo! Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! Oi, oi, oi! So, I like uh, that little video. See where he takes over the mic too? He's used to taking charge, taking control. You can also see that he's wearing the Freedom Summits t-shirt and that's actually the Creator Foundation logo that they've attached to the Freedom Summits uh, logo. And how he presents himself as we uh, when he talks about the summits, uh, us, he's not talking about it as a consultant would and saying that, well, you know, truthology and freedom summits are this. No, he's very much putting it in the tense of something that he is involved with personally, he's a part of. In fact, he is a partner. And as he stated in, well, other situations, he is a partner. But he told the court in 2019 he was just a consultant. And when asked what that involved, he, he became, of course, very evasive, trying to deliberately not answer, you know, and, and be giving answers that would take people in circles. And I think the judge picked up on that too. Well, you can tell that he picked up on it. <laughs> so that's Adrian Brennock, AB, Mr. X, all confirming that they are the one person. His process of how he claimed fraud five times has been identified by Mark Darwin in the video that he actually has now hidden on his channel. But don't worry, Mark, I've got a copy of it. <laughs> I got a copy of everything that I needed before I opened my mouth, mate. Do you think I'm not going to do that? Uh, it's an old habit I do. I actually find it difficult to watch videos off the internet, so I download them before I watch them. So if I s make a comment about a video, the chances are I'm going to have a copy of it. You should consider that before you go and do something obvious like hide them all. So what might be a good thing, Mark Darwin, is if you unhid them and showed that you had nothing to hide. And while you're at it, unhide all the ones about um, the NGOs and other ones that you hid, you know, a long time ago. Unhide them as well, because you can see them all on the Wayback Machine. And even though that you've got them hidden, they are still there and they were still made public. Just like uh, where Mark Darwin puts up this disclaimer at all these things where it's a private meeting and it's like, oh, mate, yeah, it might be a private meeting, but as soon as you stick that out on the internet and you make it public, you know, there goes all your pretty little disclaimers beforehand so that any information you give out can't be held against you. And he is good at making all these disclaimers, Mark Darwin. They don't mean shit. I tell you, if you are such a good, honest man, Mark Darwin, how about you start doing the right thing? It's about time you did. You know, you've been sitting back and letting Adrian Brunock say whatever he wants. And you've hidden every single bit of evidence that you pro possibly can to aid Adrian Brennock. 
So don't turn around and act like you're some innocent victim now and that, because I'm not buying that. I know how much is still involved in the companies that are making profit out of Nightcap or Mingenbull. So, you know, you're not so much of a victim, are you, mate? So if you don't want to be the victim, because, you know, you're running out of time to actually put your point of view across where you're not the villain. Like, he's made you out to be the villain for so long. You could paint a different story, or you can let others paint it, and then you try and say, no, that's not the case. Because it's just getting worse and worse for you, mate. If you have got anything, you know, you've sat back for way too long. Luckily, people like Stephen Starts and uh, Jason Bettles are actually got a little bit more intelligence. They know when, well, when to do the right thing for themselves is actually doing the right thing by other people as well. When you're seen to be doing the right thing and doing the right thing, that can only benefit you. But instead, just sit back in silence and let Adrian Brennock say whatever. Well, I don't need you to speak out, Mark Darwin. I've got your videos. If you want to come and counteract them in court, you can. I dare say that when it gets to that stage, they'll be wanting to speak to you personally. And, yeah, probably get your bank accounts ready to get get a dose of salts go through them too. <laughs> anyway, on that note, I'm going to leave it today. It's probably long enough as it is. I just uh, wanted to give people a little bit of an update on the characters. I, I talk about that, you know, Jason Bettles, the liquidator, um, Stephen Starts. Well, Stephen Starts is the liquidator. Jason Bettles is the bankruptcy trustee. The funny thing is that um, a liquidator is just the trustee for a bankrupt com company. So Adrian brannock has got two bankruptcy trustees that he deals with on a regular basis. And now he's selling Nightcap on Minjimble and you're supposed to have trust in what he's selling <laughs> that it won't end up another bankrupt situation, another company thrown under the bus. And, you know, the way that it, it's looking with the commercial, the way that that's getting pulled apart and even people are being said to be living there in caravans, tucked away, hidden out the back. You know, you got to wonder... It, uh, they're just taking in anybody and everybody that um, may keep them above board until they find some other way to screw everybody over and come out on top. But they're fast running out of options for that, aren't they? Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that and I'll catch you next time. Bye.